and Merry Christmas. Welcome to Christmas Eve worship here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Red Hill, Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor Wayne Moritz. Tonight's service, of course, focuses on the good news that we have from God, of God come to be with us in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It takes us to Bethlehem. It takes us to the manger. And there we find the heart of the gospel, that God loves us so much that God would send God's Son into our world to give us new and everlasting life. Now, in tonight's service, there'll be a number of Christmas carols. I certainly invite you to sing along from the comfort of your home. A candlelighting service will also culminate our service. You might like to have a candle or a battery-operated light ready to go to participate at home. And when the candles are lit, we'll join in singing that beloved Christmas carol, Silent Night, and then have a final blessing. And after that, I would invite you to extinguish your candles at home, and we'll conclude by singing Joy to the World. So friends, now let's begin our Christmas Eve celebration. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, and who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This is the Gospel from Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration, and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, 
And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock at night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, pr praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. May the Spirit of God fill us with peace and with joy on this Christmas Eve and lead us to faith in our newborn Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I love stories. I imagine you do as well, whether it unfolds page by page in a good book, whether it's a two-hour movie presentation on the Hallmark Channel, whether it's told us by our grandparents or by our children, stories captivate us. You see, stories connect us with the people that we meet in them. Stories enliven us to the possibilities of living and stories change us, speaking not only to our minds, but touching our hearts as well. And here we are tonight, gathered on this holy occasion to once again hear that holy story that unites us in hope and in joy. Of the 31,000 plus verses in the Bible, this story takes only 20 verses to tell. But it's the Christmas story, and we never tire of hearing it. Year after year, we love to hear what happened when in those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus. Friends, have you ever wondered what it is about that story that so intrigues us? I got thinking about that, and I'm thinking maybe it's those colorful characters that end up in Bethlehem, those crazy shepherds dancing through town, hooting and hollering as they go, or those mysterious kings who travel hundreds of miles to kneel before Jesus. Or could it be those high-flying angels who love to sing and to shock the bejeebers out of people when they encounter them? Or perhaps what's so intriguing is the exotic setting of this story. No snow, no ice, just swaying palm trees and gentle desert breezes. A sleepy little town overrun by crowds of visitors all looking to check in at the Holiday Inn. Or maybe we owe it to the familiarity of the story. I mean, year after year, we acted out in our Christmas pageants that we put on. We hear Linus tell it to the Peanuts gang in a Charlie Brown Christmas. Or, you know, perhaps it's the strangeness of this story. God shows up in diapers. The biggest of stories taking place in the smallest of areas. 
a tale taking us beyond observable information and calling on our faith to receive it. Even so, I think there's two other attractions to this story that make us want to hear it time and time again. And the first is that you and I, we see ourselves in this story. It's not just a story for us. It's a story about us. Look closely, listen closely, and you will see yourselves, I believe, living and breathing within these 20 verses. A young girl, only in her teens, trying to figure out what life has in store for her. Pregnant, unmarried, she's got to be thinking what people are thinking of her. Questions, doubts, worries, they're all there, just like you and I have. Or a grown man trying to figure out how to provide for his family and facing hard decisions. Where is he going to find shelter? Where is he going to find any medical care for his pregnant wife? How is he going to obtain food? How will he protect his loved ones? Questions, again, that we wrestle with. There's people just trying to eke out a living, doing the hard work of shepherding. 24-7 work, no overtime, no pension, no health care. Tiresome work that takes them away from their families. And in this story, there's people on the move, yet still waiting in long lines. And haven't we done that? People waiting to be taxed. People caught up in a world of strangers, always trying to stay one step ahead, yet always on guard against, well, who knows what. People undoubtedly feeling overwhelmed and confused. People struggling and short on hope, people like you and me, us. And yet God comes into this chaotic, anxious mix, bringing good news of great joy. This is where God wants to be. This is with whom God wants to reside. This is God come to be with us. A story just as much at home here in the Upper Perk Valley as it was all those years ago in Bethlehem. And then there's this second reason why we never tire of the Christmas story. Because we meet God in this story. Not from some long distance away, some galaxies removed from our sight, not in some terrifying vision of power, but up close and personal, welcoming and receptive to our approach. Oh, you'll find a child, the angel announced. Newly born, hungry, probably noisy. He'll be wrapped in bands of cloth. Go ahead, hold him, touch him, smile at him. This is God in the flesh, our flesh. Not scary, but inviting. Not hard to see, but oh so easy to see. And those shepherds, they could not wait to oblige the angel's invitation. Let's go, they agreed. And they took off with haste. This is the word become flesh. St. John writes in his gospel. And this word lived among us. And then he adds, we have seen his glory. Glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. That's what intrigues us. God, right before our eyes, in the fullness of divine glory, yet in the weakness of of human garb. This is our Savior. Grace flows forth from him, the love of God reaching out to you and to me and to all the world. 
It feels so good to be loved, doesn't it? And that's what this story is all about, this Christmas story. Whether you're feeling lots of love tonight or not much at all, whether you are feeling lovable this evening or not, Jesus brings you God's love. And we keep coming back to this timeless story, not only because we see God, but because we also experience the richness, the beauty of God's love as well. Friends, this is God's story, but it's also our story. It's the, who, it's the story of who we are and the embrace of God's great love for us. So take hold of it tonight. Share it tonight. The shepherds couldn't wait to tell it. May we not be able to wait either. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, may it keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. with the song of angels let us pray for the church the world and all those in need gracious God empower your church throughout the world to proclaim the good news that Jesus Christ is born unite the voices of all your faithful people in joy and celebration draw near to all who are working this night caring for your children granting them strength and encouragement. Send forth your angels to sing of peace, stilling all strife, war, and violence. Inspire leaders of all nations to strive for well-being for your children and your creation. Holy Lord, bring rest and reassurance to all facing struggles this night. Shelter travelers and those without homes. Console all who lie awake with pain or fear. Heal those who are sick or hurting. Embrace us all with your loving presence, shining forth in your Son, our Savior. Come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you 
In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As St. John reminds us, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. For the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. At this time, I invite you at home to light a candle and to join in singing Silent Night. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.